So I'm gonna make an update video for you guys so you can see what's been going on. Um, I did a community post thing the other day you uh, have seen and I made a, just a tiny little video that uh, me and Casey got married on the 24th which today is the 20, 28th I think but uh, I haven't posted anything. I got some videos edited they're just not they're they're uploaded to YouTube I just haven't published them yet because um, I had some other ones I was going to put out and I didn't but uh, you can see we got got some new goats here these white ones and this Billy we got them from from CE quite a while ago um, Ford and him and then I still got the other other ones that I had they're doing good they got the grass all eat down I actually uh, mowed that for hay a while ago I got 40 bales I think off of that off of this this pasture and that back there I mowed and uh, got the hay off that because I didn't want to have to they weren't eating it fast enough and I didn't want to have to to mow it and waste it so we did that um, I did a lot of cleanup around here we'll get get to see some of that here in a second I get to get to where I'm going did a lot of cleanup uh, for the wedding because we had it back here in the pasture and uh, everything everything went good it was just a small little thing so but you can see I got I still got trailers back in the lane I got to pull out I put them back there just to get them out of the way but we cleaned up around here a little bit I got that yellow uh, tornado pulled out of there it's out back where things go to die um, the pasture's been cleaned out a little bit I got a couple things made their way back in but uh, I want to put cows in here but I don't have a way to get cows right now because my trailer's broke we'll touch touch that in a second but uh, here's something I I just got this actually Saturday the day after uh, my wedding this is this is actually kind of rare and it, I don't usually get rare stuff but this is kind of rare and I just just stumbled upon it it's a Massey Harris two-row self-propelled corn picker I don't know which model um, if they even had models but it uh, they only made 9216 of them they made them from 1946 to 1955 and they were obsolete while they were still being made because the self-propelled combines come out about the same time so they became somewhat obsolete uh, the front tires for it had calcium in it and the rims are completely gone so these are actually the tires off my manure spreader and uh, they fit on there I gotta get a set of rims and tires for the front and I need tires for the back but this thing does it does turn over and fire I haven't had it completely running but I've had it fire it uh, it's got a six cylinder continental in it flathead you can see I got some new wires on it those are actually for one of the F's and I just stuck them on there just to just to try to get it running but it does turn over and it hits so I do a little more tinkering with it it should run and uh, been sitting in a barn for the better part of 20 years but it looks like it should work so we're going to tinker with it if not i'm not out much i paid a whole 75 dollars for this thing and uh the guy wanted somebody to buy scrap and i seen it so you know what i'm not going to scrap it i'm going to try to use it just, just to play with it's kind of rare so. so that's what we got there these are the tires that were for it as you can see they they won't hold much air um, at all. So we got that. Uh, we'll go back here where we got some more projects hiding out. Because if there's one thing that we're not short of, it's projects. We're short on time. We're short on money. But we're never short on projects around here, as a lot of you know. Um, so I can't get cows because of the trailer. Um, when we went out to get the goats from CE, I stopped by JC Smith on the way back and I was struggling to back into his driveway at his one shop 
it was it was not, more than 90 degrees facing the wrong way so I was like jackknifing it in there and I had to pull forward and back up and pull forward and back up and he noticed that the rear axle was moving forwards and backwards a bunch and he I crawled under it and he crawled under it and sure enough the weld was broke on this side the other side still holding but I got to get that fixed that that whole trip to go out and get goats just turned into a disaster it started off with my Dodge having issues with the uh, def sensor one of the def sensors was going out of it I got halfway out there on the first trip to try to go and get them and it put me in limp mode or was going to put me in limp mode um, halfway out there so I had to turn around and come back and then on the second attempt to go out there it did it again after I had it at the dealer they uh, upgraded the computer and that was not the problem it needed a new sensor so I uh, I just took my grandpa's truck and had issues with the trailer but we finally got them and all is good so another project we got that uh, is going to happen um, you guys seen me working on the Mac forever ago and I still have not gotten a master cylinder for it I actually just called the dealership today the Mac dealer and just wanting to know where my part was because I ordered it back in March $150 okay it was supposed to be there at some point you know I understand coronavirus hit and uh, that's coming from France so yeah okay it'll be delayed a while well it's going into August haven't heard nothing so I called him today and uh, there's only one master cylinder on this end of the world for that truck it's in Alberta Canada $180 plus whatever it would be to ship it here so I'm gonna look into another option for that truck but that truck is for sale if anybody wants that Mac midliner make me an offer it's for sale as soon as that master cylinder gets on it it's gone I ain't even gonna fire it up <laughs> Now I got probably gonna take it to a Richie Brothers auction for real though, um, but another project that's on the list. You guys haven't seen this truck. I uh, well actually you have seen this truck I believe. It come from where I got my combines from and that uh, <clears throat> big Alice tractor. This is a C70 Chevy tandem axle with a dump bed. It was out there. The guy. Uh, we worked out a deal. I don't exactly remember what the deal was anymore, but it's here. And I wanted it for parts for my C65. And uh, the only part I've robbed off of it so far was the dipstick. But I want to take this bed off, chop it down, and put it on the C65. Because we're not doing the straw for the go-kart race anymore. So I don't need the c65 really but it's too good of a truck to get rid of so i've decided i'm going to take this bed off and try to put on it i need to build a tailgate for it and it needs a little bit of work but for the most part it's good the only part i'm worried about is you see how that mounts to the truck it's got the frame notched there i can't do that on the C65 because the spring shackles and a cross member are right there on it so I'd have to make a subframe I'm thinking and then bolt that to the frame uh, with some plates up like this here oh Jesus I break my ankle something like that um, but that's just just for the the bed to come down in but that's how I'd mount the subframe and I don't remember if I even looked. Let me take a look. I don't remember how this hoisted up. If it was a cylinder or like a scissor lift deal. I'm thinking it's like a scissor lift deal. Oh, no, I don't remember what that's called. Oh, I can't see. I'd have to pull it out of the weeds. I'd have to pull it out of the weeds. But I want to... Uh, <clears throat> make me a single axle dump truck since I'm going to be getting rid of the Mac and uh, 
that's a project probably coming this winter here's another project um, this is a 78 camper it's got a 454 in it and I'm going to pull the 454 out basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camper off of the frame and build some kind of a hot rod out of that eventually that's nothing nothing's gonna happen tomorrow but this was at my grandpa's house and he'd been belly aching for years he wanted to get it out it's only been sitting there for 20 years so um, I pulled it out brought it here this uh, hitch I made with uh, braces from the beams from bridges at work uh, this stuff is heavy and these were some heavy-duty hinges dad had in the barn and I actually built this hitch to pull that truck home um, on Instagram there's a video of me pulling that truck home behind the 4010 with this hitch and I pulled it using these two half-inch bolts those are the only two things holding this hitch to the RV and that was the only thing holding that hitch to that truck my grandpa and buddy were freaking out because they thought them bolts weren't going to handle that little RV which has it, it 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 was a lot easier to pull that RV than it was to pull this truck but I pulled this truck with them two half inch bolts right here in the bumper I think I went to the bottom I went to the top at one point or no I was going to go to the bottom but I ended up going to the top because I torched that one out but that's how I pulled that home behind the 4010 Maybe I'm a little bit crazy, but oh well. So that's what's going on. Um, if I get a chance, I'll take you down and show you the corn and beans. Actually, I have the beans up here at the house. Um, I put nitrogen down on the corn Father's Day weekend, and I sprayed both the corn and beans with Roundup. I got to come up with a better uh, herbicide program. Because the roundup just ain't ain't cutting it. But let me uh, let me pause you for a second until we get up into the barn and continue the update there. All right, here we are in the shop, and it hasn't changed since I made the little auction video. Really, um. There is one difference though, this car. This is a 92 Toyota Camry that I bought for Casey to drive back and forth to work. And I have to uh, do a tune up and stuff on it so she can ride it around. I got my lathe and stuff moved out of the way so I can get this in here. And I did do a little research on this lathe. I haven't uh, located a pulley yet for it. But this is a... Uh, a 1918 model 34 lathe so if anybody was wondering that's what it is and that's about all I know about it but I haven't done any work to this truck it's just uh, my main priorities this past month and a half was getting ready for the wedding and my bathroom at home and I'm still not done with the bathroom at home um, so I've just been been taking a break from farm projects basically plus the, the shop's a mess it just just one thing after another comes in here and gets worked on um, I do have a video that's actually ready about this tractor um, doing the brakes on it the first round I haven't done the second round of brakes and uh, if you don't know what I mean by that I I changed the seals in the rear end for the brakes and if you can see there's a little drop of oil um, as I was using it, they started leaking again, but I had a heck of a time using this tractor to try to disc and plant with, um, due to, due to the issue that I found with the distributor, the, uh, springs for the weights. If I can find the distributor under here, the springs for the weights, one of the springs was broke, and I believe that's what was causing my, my fuss with it, and... Yeah, there's one spring in there. The other one was broke, but that one was the the good one was unhooked. So 
I just got to order parts. I'm at the, the stage where I need to order parts for that. And I have most of the parts for this. I just got to work on it. I got to get the carburetor redone and plug wires for it. And then uh, put it back together. So, But I'll show you what I mean about the frame. You can see how that, that frame on that other truck was notched for a bed. Well, look, right here is the spring mount. Wouldn't be able to notch that. I thought, and I'm going to have to work or talk to JC to see what his thoughts are. Because I want to put a plate across the back of here for hitches and stuff. But if I put, if I welded that bracket that was on that truck to the back, or to whatever that plate would be, and then run gussets down, if that would be strong enough. Or if I would just be better off making a subframe and putting on here. But I want to turn this into a... Uh, a single axle dump truck because it's, it's too good of a truck to get rid of and um, I want to start up my business I had going again and uh, go that route so it'll all start with this truck truck number one and then eventually we'll uh, get the pay star in on that action maybe as a low boy truck or a dump trailer truck or something I did uh, I did change the tires on the Paystar. Four, four rear tires I I changed there. The old ones are up here. Actually, I swapped one out on the, the front tandem too. But these tires, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them. Two of them are two-piece split rings. And two of them are three-piece. The two piece have bad tires. The three piece has good tires. And I would like to switch them and just completely get rid of the three piece and just have these as spares for something because they fit farm equipment and stuff. But I don't have the nerve to change them, I don't think. So I don't know what's going to happen, but two of them went flat and I had to change them out and I ended up putting, I bought some 22 fives that were already on the rims and I put on the back of that truck, but I have more tires here and I have more rims. I just got to make the two. Um, I bought these at an auction a few years ago for $2 a piece and I, the only way to tell if they're good is to put them on rims and see if they hold air. So. That's what I'm going to do. But I will uh I will go down to the the field here in a little bit and show you guys what's going on down there. I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right. So we're down here at the corn and beans. You can see I missed a couple spots spraying there and there and then these weeds have come up after I sprayed. But the Roundup just won't uh, won't do what I want it to do. But you can see the corn. Check out the corn. It's pretty tall. There's a couple of low spots. But I don't know what to tell you. This probably 24 rows on this side didn't get any nitrogen. I ran out. And I wasn't going to go back for another 20 gallons maybe. 40 gallons. I don't know. I put it down 40 gallon to the acre. I do need to bring the mower down here and mow where the beans aren't growing just to kill the weeds. But yeah, check this corn out. Look, that one's got two ears. That one's starting a second ear. A lot of them are starting second ears, it looks like. That one's got second. And this. This is just on the headland stuff, but it's it's up over my head. That's as high as I can reach. I can't reach the tassel. That's pretty cool. It's got some double-eared corn. I know that you that happens. It's it's not unusual, but I don't think I've ever seen seen so much double-eared corn. That one has succumbed to something. You can see the corn's real thin right here. 
real thin. It ain't even barely waist high. Some of it ain't even come into silk yet. But I planted it a little thicker than I wanted to and a little bit thicker than it actually recommended. Let's, uh, let's go over here. You can see the grass is still growing. I sprayed it, which put a damper on it, but it didn't completely kill it because I think the corn was too tall at the time I applied the Roundup. But the beans were the right height. I just, we got some pretty obnoxious weeds around here. Well, let's go in here to where the corn is way over my head. Oh yeah, this stuff definitely got nitrogen. Potential for double earage. And it's way up over my head. You can see the grass ain't doing so hot in here. So this is actually turning out better than I thought it would. And I think probably the reason this stuff's not doing so hot, it's probably planted a, a touch deep. That's what happened with the soybeans last year. And the spots they didn't come up, they were too deep. So I actually adjusted for that this year and the beans come up throughout the whole field over here it's just some have succumbed to the weeds and the lack of rain and there's a woodchuck under that trailer that ate all these beans right in here but they're doing good I went 14 inch centers this year and I am happy with the way it turned out for sure um, some areas are a little bare where the weeds are, but you come out here. Look at these beans. It's like a whole different bean crop. It's starting to get flowers on it. But yeah, the corn going out that way is pretty uniform. Beans are pretty uniform. I'm, I'm actually happy this year with the way things are. Um, except the weed control. That's uh, something I got to work on. Like I said, you see over here a spot that didn't get sprayed at all. The beans are not doing so hot. The weeds have kind of choked them out, but oh well, every year is a learning experience. Uh, last year I didn't spray soon enough, and we definitely had issues with that. And this year, I sprayed. Oh, these beans are up to my knees. These are doing nice. Oh yeah, they're almost up to my waist. Right here. Check that out. I like these 14 inch rows. I can walk down them. Not trip over beans. There's beans in here. It's just hard to see them. Definitely going to work on my weed program for next year. Might try uh, Liberty Link beans or something. Give that a shot. I'm out, uh, I just finished working on the car. So I'm going to put that video up on my other channel. So put some videos on there. But there's the, uh, the crops. Oh, if anybody's looking for semi-trailers, give me a call. We're selling all but two of them. So anyways, I'll catch you all on the next one.